Hey Paul in Southampton, Hampshire, or as he calls it, Southern England. Okay, maybe it's me that says Southern England. <laughs> Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com. Pronounce that however you like. I'm going to show you how I cut non-prescription fashion lenses with anti-glare for your new Ray-Ban 51, which is the Wayfarer Color 2000 and the 50i size. Let me take everything out of the packaging that Ray-Ban sends it to me. Your Ray-Ban hard case your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth, and the star of the show, the main attraction, we have, of course it comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together while it's being shipped from overseas, and I will put that on there when I ship overseas to you. But again, this is the Ray-Ban 5121 color 2000, which is the classic shiny black in the 50 eye size with the 22 bridge. And of course, this is part of the Ophthalmic series, the Wayfarer. This one happens to be made in China. It is modeled after the original Wayfarer, which is model number 2140, color 901, which is their classic shiny black. Again, 50 eye size with the 22 bridge. Almost identical frames. It's just one is made in Italy, the other one is made in China, along with your iPhone, iPod, MacBook, and sophisticated spy satellites <laughs> made in China, but it's still made of good ophthalmic quality. Now, again, this is the original hipster glasses, the original Blues Brothers. This one I happen to have in the blue tortoise here with the original green G15 lenses in there. Ray-Ban had no idea that the geek chic look would be so popular, so they started making one with that's known as the ophthalmic wayfarer these were never designed to have sunglass lenses placed in them or i'm sorry prescription lenses placed in them so they came out with ones that have the little demo of which i will take out now and cut anti-glare lenses for you they both still have the triple barrel hinge none of that has changed still made incredibly strong you can run over these with a car although i don't recommend you doing it and let me make sure I got the right one. Yep, 5121. Other than that, they are identical. In fact, I bet the lenses will even pop into these. But I'm going to take your frame, put it into the tracing element of my edger, and hit start. Everybody wants to know, how does the computer know what shape lens to cut? This is why. The stylus is going to come up and go around and trace the shape of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com, where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy genuine authentic Ray-Ban and you'll receive one free pair of clear non-prescription fashion lenses and Paul in your case these are these will be non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipts have my federal ID tax number so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars you will get reimbursed for this purchase whether they are prescription or not and in Paul's case these are not prescription. This green outline, very large green outline, is the shape of your lens. I will minify it to us down to the actual size and that is the shape lens I will cut. For now I'm going to magnify it while I'm working. Let me move these out of the way for now so I don't get confused. I'm going to take your lenses out of the protective sleeves on which they come in. Place the first one on the platform. Take the second one out. Now this, move my flashlight out of the way. This is a block, or as I like to call them, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it's cutting. This is what's going to hold it in place in the lathe. So I need a double-sided adhesive sticker, of which I have two left. That was close. I almost ran out. Now the black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick one onto the first block. Stick one onto the second block. Now on the back is a little silver button. That is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice tonight. The first time is now, and well, in just a moment, I'm going to pull the paper off to make the black side sticky. Now the magnet is going to get married to something magnetical in there. Your lens is on the platform. Now if I were to minimize this again, you can see the outline of the lens. Now if this were prescription lenses, I would put it into my lensometer and rotate it to where it was perfect. This time it does not matter how it goes on there. I hit that button and that arm is going to come down and place the block on two, which will be the right lens. It really doesn't matter if this is right or left because these are non-prescription. Pull the paperweight again to make this side sticky. Marry that magnet up. Woohoo! Come back here now. You're just excited to make a lens, aren't you? Get back in there. Magnet work. Hit the button. And now the block is applied to which will be the left lens. Although, is this the left or the right? Keep your eye on it. Which one is which? Which one is which? All right, well done here. 
So now I can pick up the flashlight. By the way, this is the edger. This is what costs forty thousand dollars. I recommend everyone go out and buy their own. Then you can it weighs two hundred pounds, and you can put it on your kitchen counter, and you won't need me anymore. You can cut your own lenses at home. But the actual cutting wheel is over here on the far right. It's the one that has that white residue that's left over from cutting lenses. That's going to cut the lens down to the final size. This wheel in the center with that channel, that valley, that's what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So now the magnet is going to do its job the second time. It's going to hold it in place in the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know the machine well enough to call it chuck. Grab my stylus again. I'm going to wake up the computer. That is the shape lens that it is going to cut. Now these are polycarbonate lenses. If I were to cut plastic, high index, or Trivex, I would select that now, but these are polycarbonate. I do not want to polish the edge of the lens. I do not want to put a bevel on the front surface, the convex surface of the lens. I only want to put a bevel on the rear surface, the concave surface of the lens. And that will conclude your vocabulary lesson of the day. So I'm going to hit that green button, which is start in every language. The door closes, that clamp shuts. And then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. You can see as it's tracing, you can see as it's going around. In fact, it does this twice. The old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once. It's actually measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel. So you have the least amount of edge thickness. Now, Paul and everyone else watching, these are non-prescription, so you're not gonna have any edge thickness. But because I do cut prescription lenses all day long, that does become more critical. Now you do see water running in the background. That is only there to catch the optical sawdust. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic and high index plastic cut wet. Now your lenses are made out of polycarb. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They're also virtually unbreakable. Your lens is bulletproof up to 22 caliber and has both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Now, you have seen water kick in now. That tells me it's in the last stage of the cutting cycle. It does that to wash away any optical debris, which essentially optical sawdust. Now, a little arm has come out. That's what's applying the safety bevel. It has a little spinning wheel. And it's applying the safety bevel to the rear surface, the concave surface of the lens. In just a moment, we will see if the lens is the correct size or I have to take a little bit more off. I know from experience this has a deeper bevel. And I may have to cut a little bit more off to make sure it fits properly. I'm going to hit that button to open up the chuck. Grab a paper towel to dry your lens off with. Use my thumbnail to wipe away any optical debris that is there. Now let's see if it fits in your frame. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner using my thumbs to push down at the nose. It does snap in. In fact, out of curiosity, I'm going to pop it back out. Let me take this block off. It is no longer needed. And dry that off from the center. Let's see if it fits into the 2140, the original Wayfarer, the sunglass version. Tuck it in the outside corner. Yep, practically the same size. So there you have it. It fits in the Italian made. It fits into the Asian made frame. Push that in there. Now we're ready to cut the left lens. We're going to put the, put the lens back into the spot. Flip that over to L. And we're going to hit the green button, which again is start. The two white styluses are going to come back out and it's going to trace the shape of the frame. Of course, you can see as it's measuring going around, making sure that's large enough to fit. And then measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel. Although you will have no edge thickness whatsoever because these are non-prescription. And it would take a very strong prescription to protrude from a plastic frame anyway. Metal frames are much skinnier and you can see edge thickness much more than a plastic frame, so you'd have to have a really high prescription for you to have any edge thickness whatsoever in this frame. Now, you did upgrade to the anti-glare coating. The anti-glare coating is three features in one. Here's a lens without it, but it 
It eliminates glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain. But from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights. Now it's a reflection free lens. That's why it goes by the initials ARC. It stands for anti-reflective coating. So when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses. It makes for much better eye contact. Plus, an important reason why a lot of people get it is that if you take a selfie or if someone else takes a picture with a flash, you don't see the flash lit up in your lens like you will with one without that anti-glare coating. The third feature that I like, which is the practical side, is it comes with the hardest scratch coating in the business. It takes well over 24 hours to vaporize seven different coatings onto the lens. This is the original demo lens that came out, so you can see the difference. But because of the, it takes 24 hours and to vaporize seven different coatings where it has to dry in between coatings, the manufacturer puts the hardest scratch coating the business on over that to protect their time and investment. So not only do you have a beneficial quality of eliminating glare, not only do you have a cosmetic quality of eliminating reflections, but you also have the practical side that, again, you have the hardest scratch coating possible. Now, nothing on this planet is scratch proof not even diamonds, but you have the hardest scratch coating possible on these lenses. Now this frame, the Ray-Ban 5121 Wayfair, sells for $180, and of course you're gonna get one free pair of clear single vision prescription or non-prescription fashion lenses for free with the price of the 180. You paid the extra $40 to upgrade to the anti-glare coating for a total of 220. Now of course, you are one of my international buyers in England, so there is an international shipping fee, unless you're willing to drive over here and pick these up to save a little bit of money. But first you're gonna have to have a floating car. I believe they call them boats and airplanes. So, this door will open. Take the lens out. I'm going to dry it off again. Let's make sure it fits into the frame. I'm going to tuck it in at the outside corner using my thumbs to press inward. It snaps in. I'm going to take the block off. That is no longer needed. Dry the lens off. In fact, everyone gets a free premium microfiber cleaning cloth and I'm going to test this one to make sure it works. I don't want to send you a defective cloth all the way to England. That would be terrible. So I test everyone before I ship it. So I little optical humor that never gets old but i also include instructions not only how to care for your cleaning cloth but for the ray-ban one your eyeglasses your ray-ban cloth and case so they will last you for years no other seller on the internet does that plus i also send out a selfie request so paul i'd love to have your picture on the website you can brag to all your friends that you're a ray-ban model but before i ship these out i'm going to make sure they're in standard alignment also known as a three-point stance now paul let me back up for a minute when you get these in the mail um, there is a very small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other, and I'm no different, and I'll show you in just a moment. But because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. But again, I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set it on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I take mine off and I press down. It wobbles on the counter, but they sit level on me. Now this is a good example. This is the Ray-Ban Wayfair, originally designed in 1952. It has panoscopic tilt. This is the classic one that presidents, musicians, famous people, celebrities and the like. Now in 1992 they redesigned it. This is the new Wayfair that I'm wearing, the 2132 new Wayfair. I happen to be wearing color 789, which is the blue-orange, because it matches my shoes. How about that? And my shirt. I'm always matching. but. So, they made it a little bit smaller, a little bit rounder, and it does not have what I call the panoscopic tilt, which has that angle, the classic famous angle. This is a little bit more vertical, more up and down. Let me put mine back on so I can see what I'm doing, yo. All right, so I tested one way. I'm going to flip them over, press down. There is no wobble. I close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly. And they do, and they're not askew in any way or another. Check the tension on each hinge. That is the same as well. So that's perfect. So 
these are ready to ship to England. If anyone has any questions, you can email me through this link or at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Paul in Southampton, Hampshire, England. I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut non-prescription lenses with anti-glare for your Ray-Ban 5121 color 2000 in the 50 eye size. And hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.